friends. It's good to be back with you again. Again, <laughs> I know it's been a while since I was here the last time. But you know, the, uh, the holiday season is a particularly busy time of year for me and makes uh, putting shows up very difficult. Those of you that know me know that uh, I drive over the road. I deliver frozen seafood to Asian restaurants all over the state of Ohio and into Kentucky. And in the holidays, of course, the orders go up and the available work days go down because of two holidays. Traffic goes up geometrically, and which puts a burden and a, uh, a serious burden <laughs> on my schedule. So the last couple of weeks, I've been up, uh, oh, picking up the load about 7 o'clock in the morning and not getting home a lot of nights till 10, 30, 11 o'clock. And then, of course, the holiday itself was Christmas and uh, ten grandkids, six children, and all the assorted in-laws and outlaws that come with that crew. That uh, made for a very busy day that day, too. So here I am on New Year's Day, and I'm glad to be back. I hope all of you had a, a very, very good holiday season, a good Christmas, and I hope you look forward to and what could be an interesting new year to say the very least. I do hope to kind of normalize these these podcasts out over the next month or so. I'd like to uh, I'd like to begin going at a schedule of about once a week, maybe even shorter than that, but uh, there's still problems with my work schedule and working all of that out, plus you know, the research and the writing and, and the working all on, on all of these does take considerable amount of time. So we'll work on it and we'll press on it and we'll see that what's the best we can do and we'll have to work with that. Life's agitation and commotion tends always to exhaustion as a pendulum tends to rest. The sweet voices of pleading affections the loud cry of desires and instincts that roar for their food like beasts of prey. All our passions and flames burn to their extinction. They perish while they yet glow. Oh, my friends, if we would know the joy and peace of God, then as the lamb quietly pursues the shepherd's loving caress, we too must present our hearts still and silently before him whose voice commands whose love warms and comforts, and whose truth makes all life fair. You know, in life, there are lots of times and places where we need to speak up and take action, take a stand, be a force in our lives as citizens, fighting the encroaching evil and corruption that we see everywhere in both public and private life, as parents, brothers, sisters, even children, more specifically as lambs, as believers. We need to speak up and take action while we are involved in God's work according to whatever task or call He has laid on our hearts. And in prayer, we speak up and take action through petition, through praise, and most importantly through standing against the enemy as a prayer warrior. There are other times, however, when it is just as important to be still and silently reflect and prayerfully meditate on Almighty God and on His presence in our lives. We are encouraged, even commanded repeatedly in His Word, to take time to consider God and to quietly ponder His ways that we may come to know Him intimately and have life. For knowing God intimately from within absolutely requires spending time regularly with Him in abject silent surrender and an eager, expectant quietude. Just a few scriptures, all of these as a matter of fact from the book of Psalms, will demonstrate the point, but they can be found throughout God's Word. Commune with your own heart on your bed and be still. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches. 
I will meditate also on all thy works. And lastly, from Psalm 46.10, Be still and know that I am God. Spiritual serenity, the spiritual calm that God commands, does not come from lack of troubles. It builds from a steady, deep, and quiet reflection on the ways and works of a powerful, loving God on behalf of His people. You know, I don't know, and probably shouldn't know, any of the details of your prayer lives. But what I do know is that in some of the best, most comforting and productive times of prayer and communion with God that I have ever experienced, I never uttered a word past, Oh God, as I collapsed silent and prostrate before the throne closing my ears to the distractions around, no matter how sweet the music, not berating the world for all its ills or its treatment of me, not crying for the heart's desires, simply waiting expectantly and resting profoundly in His warm and loving presence, waiting just to learn of Him and experience Him. As I rest there, his word glides gently across my, my spirit, commanding instant obedience. Be still and know that I am God. And as I wait, quietly, yet eagerly and expectantly, he stills the will in the heart with his presence, that my spirit may bask in and drink in the wonder and majesty of Almighty God, in who He is, of what He has done, and of His desires for my life. Oh, my friends, can you not see it is here, in our quiet solitude with God, that our focus on Him is restored and renewed, and the next step in our walk, in our work, in Him is laid out before us and within us. This is absolutely critical for the focus of the believer, the focus of all lambs of God must be directly on Him and being in His presence, if you would, doing with God, not simply for God. We must be a Mary, we must learn to be a Mary who put aside all else to sit quietly at the feet of our Lord, rather than a Martha, who is constantly running to and fro to do everything just right for Him, even at the expense of the very relationship she claimed to cherish. Lambs require, require and thoroughly enjoy basking quietly in the warmth of God's love. They delight in His presence though it is true that all lambs have their tasks in calling in service to our Lord, as He individually, individually calls us. And it is also true that we are diligent in all our efforts in this area. Yet the fact remains that our first work always, always, is the work of adoring, praising, worshiping, and knowing Almighty God. We must come to see first that all of life is an opportunity for developing deeper communion with God, our risen Savior. We must continue always, always to grow in His intimacy and in His knowledge. For it is life, it is life unto us, as He is life both within himself and within us. Furthermore, we must all come to understand that this stillness before the living God is not something that can be, or even should be, rushed into or hurried out of. We must take time, give time, devote ourselves to it. 
if we would benefit from it and rest in it. God's presence is a radiating fire, a divine energy that all believers are meant to absorb as the desert sands soak up the rain of a spring thunderstorm. This silent, prayerful soaking of the soul invites the love of our Heavenly Father to seep ever so deeply into the inner core of our being to bring His healing and our renewal. You know, as the sign for the Marine says, the, they're always looking for a few good men. We well, you know the Lord is always looking, looking and searching and seeking for deep, fulfilling, intimate relationships with all his believers. But all too often, his children are caught up and diverted into the rat race of doing rather than being, sometimes to the exclusion of knowing him who called us to do and to be. <laughs> his purpose for each of us includes giving us everything we need for the walk he has called us to. But my friends, our greatest need is simply him, just being in Him, quietly and thoroughly in Him, that He may be thoroughly in us. As the evangelist once said, our end is simple. All we have to do is show up and shut up. Our Father will do all the rest. He will do all the heavy lifting. He will fill your heart and spirit with strength, love, awe, and amazement. This is his promise. This is the testimony of all who have gone before us. Yet we must practice the patience of the Spirit here, however. God's timetable and ours are quite probably two different animals entirely. For the Lord is in no rush, and quite often we are. Oh, my friends, my friends, I simply cannot overstress the message here. Silent solitude with God is an absolute necessity. Without it, intimacy with God simply will not happen. Yet with it, as our spirits become saturated in the fullness of the living God, as we quietly gaze upon the Lord's glory with unveiled faces, we are ourselves transformed from glory to glory into His image, and we become truly reborn into His Spirit in reality and in experience as well as in name, even even while we are yet encumbered and trapped within this humble, broken and aging body. The cares, anxieties and stresses of life are lifted from us as we enter into a lifestyle of regular, silent, soaking prayer with Yahweh. Our hearts and lives are restless and whiplashed. Our spirits atrophy and die within us unless they rest in Him. True peace, any kind of peace, without Him, is unknowable. All our work, all work for that matter, for His kingdom, is a lie and a fraud if we do not take the time to know Him who has called and sent us. It is the wolves and the harlots and the hirelings that live on and perinate on only the tasks at hand, for they serve a different master. Lambs live and serve only through union with the living shepherd. 
to all believers and lambs that hear my voice, please understand the message he has laid on my heart tonight. Your life and your healing is in this quiet submission at the Master's feet. Your abundance and every need, the answers to life's questions are to be found in solitude with the Lord. All that we long for is to be found here, in the stillness of our own hearts, before the living God. It's as near as your next breath, and you don't even have to sweat and strive for it. Simply be still and know that He is God. Know that He is God. Thank you, Lord. As always, I would like to thank Zeph and Trish Daniel for the use of their music. We open tonight with divisions, as usual, and we will close with the prayer. Zeph and Trish's music can be found at ReverbNation.com slash ZedJaw. That's ReverbNation.com slash ZedJaw. Also, Zeph has recently unified all of his websites into one at Podbean.com. All of his music, video, and spoken messages can be, or soon will be, found there. This web address is Zeph Daniel. That's all one word, Zeph Daniel. Dot podbean dot com. I urge you to give this site a visit. It is a marvelous, marvelous site and huge <laughs> and getting bigger by the day. And again tonight, as a special treat, I am pleased to present the musical talent and witness of a dear friend, Linda Rose, also known on the internet as Spirit Song. She has a gorgeous voice in an almost hypnotic way with her 12-string guitar. I hope you enjoy her as much as I do. Tonight we will hear Come Away, Run Away. Linda's music can be found at ReverbNation.com slash Spirit Song. That's ReverbNation.com slash Spirit Song. She also has a uh, compelling blog site at lrspiritsong.blogspot.com That's lrspiritsong, all one word, lrspiritsong.blogspot.com give, give these websites a thorough look when you get the chance. I believe you will be glad you did. As a matter of fact, I guarantee it. Until the next time, my friends, may God be with you. And more importantly, may you be with God. In his name, good night. Come away, run away with me. It's a new song. The Spirit had given me on July 21st.
shifting things around, flesh falling to the ground, sweet surrender to the wind. Can't you hear the roaring sound? His kingdom will abound. Thank you. 